All right, guys, welcome right back on Africa Business Radio. So we're heading right into our interview for today. Big, big conversation we need to have. And um, I like the fact that we're talking about data today because <laughs> we need data for all other things. But in the business world, uh, and indeed for a country uh, that's developing or for developing countries, data is also so key. But it's clear that we have not been utilizing data as much as we should, which is one of the major reasons we are in the situation that we find ourselves today. All right. So joining me, uh, I have the pleasure of talking uh, to a veteran <laughs> when it comes to data analysis, mobile marketing, and all of that great stuff. Uh, so I have with me the CEO of Tarragon Group, Mr. Elo Ume, joining us on Breakfast Connect this morning to discuss how data analysis can help in a developing world. Good morning, Mr. Elo. Hi, morning. Thanks for having me. Ab- absolutely. I'm doing great. Thanks for uh, making our time to join us this morning. Um, to have this conversation, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so first, um, let's let's start with you because there's no better person to have this conversation with than a person like you who you know heads a company that has been you know one of the leading companies, a leading company as a matter of fact when it comes to mobile marketing uh, and the effective use of data. So the first thing I want to um, ask you, especially for you know um, a lot of people who just hear about data and they think they really understand it but they don't even really understand it which is why you know data has not been effectively utilized and also for a lot of the uh, people who don't understand what data is so from a layman's perspective or if you want to define it in a layman's uh, way why is data important in the first place like why is data so important and crucial to development um, well, it's really the evolution mm. of um, technology that is leading us to this point. Right. Um, and data is at the heart of that. As, mm. as devices become more intelligent, mm. the, the internet is making them more intelligent. And where, what is the source of that data? The source of that data is connections. Mm. Um, the number, the multiplicity of connections that is happening in this device that we all own and hold in our hands mm. is increasing. Every you know, every day we are getting a new app. Um, that app is connecting to several other apps. Mm-hmm. Um, we're in the API economy. What is enabling the API economy is data points. Right. But at the core of it, it's um, at the core of it is really um, the smartphone is getting smarter. Mm-hmm. And um, if the smartphone is getting smarter, it could be it could become very very. As it gets smarter, there's more and more um, possibilities. Mm. Um, and technology is evolving um, every day. You know, 20 years ago, the phones that we had just had a single connection to the to the to the telco. That mm. connection to the telco was enabled by a by a radio, yeah. um, which is the mast, what mm-hmm. we call masts, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but over these 20 years, the device has evolved. Today, we are connected to the telco. That's just one connection. Right. We're connected to Wi-Fi. That's another connection. Our apps are connected to several other larger applications, yes. several servers. So there's a multiplicity of, of connections. These mm-hmm. connections, what is enabling it beyond the hardware, increasingly what is being enabling it now is data mm-hmm. because it's no longer um, it's no longer desktop computers, large servers. We're not talking about cloud computing, right? Mm-hmm. Cloud computing is information that is stored that, that makes these connections more and more intelligent. So mm-hmm. Um, data is at the is at the heart of everything we do. So any, anybody that's thinking digital, thinking technology, mm. um, the, at the end of the day, it lands on the on the on the the box stops on the desk on the on the like they say the box stops on the desk of data. Mm. Um, we are going into a new trend which is called serverless, mm. um, and, and we are going into we are already commoditizing software. Um, so software will become a commodity. Mm. So what is enabling one? application to talk to another application is just intelligence what is intelligence intelligence is information what is that information is processed is processed data mm. so um that is at the that is at the heart of what we that's at the heart of what's going on right now in technology um globally um mm. and um yeah, that's that's the easy way to um to explain it but to a layman yeah. you should just think about it as i have a smartphone mm. if i have a smartphone this smartphone suppose phones have 20 apps in them while mm-hmm. some people's phones have 50 apps in them yes. the more apps you have on your phone the more you're using um data mm. to enhance that offering the the, the the offering the communication offering that you're that you're consuming um 
and what is at the heart of that is, is data. So mm. our job is to, you know, take this data, organize it in, in, a, in a proper form mm. where value can be created and captured. And we help companies connect to their consumers using, using data. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. Okay, so um, with all of the all of what you've said now, I can already see, you know, the benefits, the the the, the endless pros uh, of this. Right now, let's talk about developing countries, and of course, a country like Nigeria with Nigerian mind. How can data science really help us? I mean, if you look at you know all of the things we're going through, uh, the business, economy, healthcare, everything else, and security, um, this is definitely needed if we effectively utilize it it could help us a great deal turn around our fortune uh so how can data science help developing countries uh with nigeria in mind as as case study well i think the and i, I you know i'll go back to the to to, to, to the response i gave uh, yeah. to the earlier question um when you look at nigeria nigeria has there are 200 200 million people in nigeria mm-hmm. yeah, about 100 over 150 million um um, mobile phone connections. Mm-hmm. Um, and what does that mean? These mobile phone connections we're talking about today, um, these devices, a lot of them, 40%, 45% of them are smartphones. Right. Um, by 2025, at least 70% of them will be smartphones. Mm. So what does that mean? It means that we'll have 100 million devices that are more powerful than something called the Pentium 4 and Pentium 5 and all the mm. computers we were talking about 15 years ago. Right. Because these mobile devices are much more powerful. Mm-hmm. They have processing capacity that is much more than computers. Mm. And we know what computers what computers did to the world. Mm-hmm. Right? You, you, you remember, I don't know uh, if you're around uh, for Y2K. Mm. Yeah. Y2K was a company mm. it was they, they Some people you know, tied it back to the end of the world, if you think yeah, absolutely. World, right? Um, we're, 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 we're right now for developing countries. When you think about a country like Nigeria, mm. we're gonna have 100 million smartphones mm. um, on, in people's hands um, mm. by 2025. Mm. Um, if these smartphones are in people's hands and this they have multiple connections, mm. um, you know, at the heart of it, there's a saying I can't, I can't, I can't remember who's attributed to, but it says. He who controls the code controls the world. Mm. What does that mean? It just essentially means that the people, the, the, who, who, who powers, um, who powers the software mm. that runs computing, mm. essentially controls the world. Absolutely. Um, and for a company like Terragon, how are we organizing this data mm. in the markets, yes. the markets countries that we are focused on? Um, there's a ton of data in in many different um, businesses, mm-hmm. um, but the power of big data, which is at the heart of the value that we create as a company, mm-hmm. um, comes from you know the privacy compliant, transparent, and secure um, processes mm-hmm. that we've built that connects all these disparate data sources to harness the value mm-hmm. and. Um, and, and and pass that value on um, to to the end users. Um, right. That is that is at the heart of what we are trying to do. Right. And if we have market opportunity of hundred million connection mm-hmm. um, back to the mobile phone, um, then it's significant because if data is going to power how people um, connect, how people talk to each other, mm-hmm. how people um, interact, um, then the companies that control this code. Um, need to, you know, in a very, um, in a very compliant way, in a very transparent way, support the key players in the ecosystem, mm. um, unlock this value. So that is the role we're playing, and we think that the trickle down effect, the multiplier effect of this, um, would go from businesses because we are largely a B two B company mm. down to the end users. Right. Right, fantastic. So let's talk about um, let's talk more about Tarragon brand, uh, and let's now bring up the, the the subtopic mobile marketing. Right now, with what you've also spelt out, I can already tell how. I mean, it's already happening, but with the uh, projection you've given. So imagine a hundred million smartphones in the hands of a hundred million Nigerians. I can only imagine what that would do you know, to mobile marketing uh, in the next coming years. 
Um, how do you see, what, what do you see, um, you know, when that happens? Like when you talk about mobile markets, do you think it would be, it would largely or even threaten, you know, terrestrial media some more? Do you think it would be a situation where we'll have like 90% of mobile ma- marketing dominating and maybe like 10% left for terrestrial media? How do you see the future when this happens, uh, specifically talking mobile marketing right now? Well, <laughs> I try, I try very hard not to predict the future. I can't, I can't really tell the future. Um, this is you indirectly saying to me, um, what do we see? Mm. Um, or what do I see? I, mm. I, 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 difficult to say. Mm. Um, but I just use a very simple... Um, I just use a very simple analogy. Mm. If you have 100 million people on mm-hmm. a smartphone, um, media aggregates to smart devices. Absolutely. What is media to play? Media goes from text down to video. Mm-hmm. Um, the biggest thing globally right now is connected TV, which mm-hmm. is smart TV, TV Hulu, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, Netflix. The, the, the connected TV is very different from smart TV. So, right. Um, where you think about that possibility, you put it on the one end. Mm-hmm. And you think about the scramble for mobile money mm-hmm. um, in Africa, which is not, which is not, a, it's not a trend that is um, in other parts of the world, right? Right. You put it on the other end. So you can see native telco channel driven by USSD, and you can see something that is even more relevant globally, connected TV. Mm. At the base of these two things, um, what is what is below it? Mm. Uh, what is below it is enterprise applications that okay. run processes that are data driven. Okay. Um, so for us as a business, we stick our mission. What is our mission? We're super focused mm. on intelligently connecting companies to their consumers of mobile. Mm. So when we look at this range of possibilities from connected TV down to um, down to mobile banking, or, right. um, down to um, USSD-based banking, mm. we see a range of possibilities. How we, we look at those possibilities and we try to figure out how do we play mm. to enable companies to connect to their consumers. Mm. That is the, to the extent that I can predict. Right. In terms of what trends, because that is that's really our strategy over the next five years. Mm-hmm. Um, at the heart of it, what trends do we see? Um, what trends do we see becoming commonplace? What trends do we see becoming dominant? Hmm. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't, I can't, I can't for now because I, I, I can't for now point in one direction. Hmm. I think some of the things that, for instance, a few years ago, I predicted that telcos we have an outsized role to play in financial services. What hmm. in Nigeria? That, that has been turned on its head, mm. but the jury is still out of one. Mm. Um, however, um, one thing I know for a fact is how Africans are able to, African businesses are mm. able to um, are able to innovate business models mm. would have a significant role to play. Right. Um, would have a significant role to play in um, in in how this, in how the Big trends emerge right. going into the future. So it's it's and business model innovation. Um, it's it, it, pricing is in there, hmm. product is in there. Um, how we the propositions to, to the target consumers is in there, hmm. and so that it, that will play a very very important role. Um, so that is the, the extent. That's to the extent I can I can predict what will happen in the future. Right. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> if, uh, let me put you on the spot. Do you think Nigeria is ready for where this is headed? Absolutely, Nigeria mm. is a very um, because I know we still have yeah, challenges. You know, we have we still have challenges down here, um, especially you know with when you talk about you know internet affordability. When you talk about people being tech savvy, when you talk about people waking up to tech, um, a lot of people will still argue that uh, for all the tech talk and tech craze and you know um, social media trends the the number of nigerians who have access to these things are still in the minority and and i think that i I could agree to an extent so so i think that these are some of the challenges that's what i'm asking do you think nigeria is ready Uh, and what are some of the things we could do to really really get there so that we take advantage of of this when when you know as, as things proceed Um, yeah, uh, like I said earlier, I think Nigeria is, Nigeria is ready. Mm. I think that um, I think it's in chaos that you find opportunity. Mm. It's in, right. It's in um, it's in discomfort you find growth. Mm. Um, Nigeria is a typical example of that. Um, you see the you see the things coming out of technology. 
um, in spite of um, with infrastructure deficit in Nigeria, when you compare the infrastructure deficit in Nigeria and the price of data across African countries, mm -hmm. I am even amazed at how telcos are able to bring down the price of data, data. to the extent that they have. Right. Um, considering infrastructure deficit, power, um, roads, different things. Mm. So, um, is Nigeria ready? Because these are the fundamentals. These are the things that are going to drive stuff. It's yes. people. It's um, it's um. It's how you put the how you put resources together to um, create economic value, mm -hmm. and and they, 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 we are thriving. We are thriving. Mm -hmm. um, you see what has happened in fintech over the last five to seven years. That's really phenomenal. Um, and that is that is that that just gives you an indicator as to the sort of things that are coming, still coming. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to start thinking about other verticals, right? Um, I think globally. Um, financial technology companies uh, have have ridden the COVID wave um, mm. because you know, finance is very very easy to um, to disrupt with technology. But mm. there's going to be other sectors that will drive significant value um, riding on the on the on the foundations right. of financial technology. So um, they, in, if you look at across Africa, yeah. the size of the opportunity, the scale of the ambition. Um, the the people, the entrepreneurial spirit, mm -hmm. um, you, you find that in good measure um, in Nigeria. So right. those are the ingredients. Those are the that create magic. Right. Right now, so I read through your profile and I've seen how, you know, um, you have transformed over the years or evolved over the years and also, you know, brought your company, Tarragon Group, from how you started way back to what it is now in 2021. And I think that it is absolutely incredible. I can only imagine <laughs> the kind of plans you have or the kind of ideas you've already thought of uh, for the next five to 10 years without giving away too much. Um, being, you know, a leading brand like yours, can you just, you know, give us a little something to expect, aside from what you've already said, a little something to expect, um, you know, groundbreaking stuff, different stuff, unique stuff uh, that Tarragon is known for to expect in the near, in the nearest future. What should we expect from Tarragon Group? Um, well, I, I don't think there's any surprises. We are quite open about what we do. Oh, great, um, great. Okay, <laughs> we've been we've been leaders mm. in marketing technology on the continent mm. uh, for the last ten years. Absolutely. Um, what we want to promise everybody, everybody that cares to hear or cares mm. to listen, is we want to maintain that leadership position. Mm. And and to maintain that leadership position, we think that there's an opportunity to um to really really help. Businesses and mm. yeah, and consumers, uh, the end user, um, harness um, the possibilities um, um, that is, you know, the possibilities um, um, that their mobile device mm. um, presents them. Mm. Um, for us, if we are able to um, deliver on this promise, uh, we think we will maintain that leadership position. Mm. It is not. Staying in this position for 10 years, um, some people would argue, um, but in terms of products and technology, um, IP on the continent, mm -hmm. um, solving for the continent, we don't think there's any other company right. um, that is in the position um, that has stayed in that, that has sustained this position. Yes, um, for this long. As much as Terran has. And um, we give a lot of... Um, so impressive. So impressive. Mm. The end users. Mm. So that that is what you would expect from us. Fantastic. To continue to serve our customers, partners, clients, and end users um, as best we can. Amazing stuff. I mean, I'm, this is super impressive, especially uh, because it is so crucial to to a lot going on down here. Crucial to our development. It could transform a whole lot if you look at a lot of the things that a lot of the problems or issues that Nigeria is facing right now. <laughs> if this is properly utilized, we could actually surmount a lot of these uh, problems. So it's really great what you're doing, uh, you and your company. So big regards to the whole team, and congratulations for uh, the consistency and being around for so long and still being a leading brand. Thank you so much for making our time to talk to us this morning, Mr. Elo Ome. We really do appreciate it. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thanks. Yeah. 
All right, guys, uh, we have been talking to Elo Ume, who is CEO of Tarragon Group. Um, absolutely great conversation. And look at that. Um, data, hmm, technology, things are going in a very interesting direction. Interesting direction. And it's important for us to be ready as a country. Uh, it's important for us to be ready as a people. Uh, and how do we get ready as a country? He already mentioned that. You know, partners, people coming together, putting resources together, ensuring that more people have access to tech, to the tech world, to the to the internet, uh, to these softwares that can make their lives better. And when you have an empowered people, what do you have? You have increased IGR, right? Uh, and income per capita, right? And overall, you have a more successful country. I mean, it's just common sense. So we need to do the right thing. Keep doing the right thing, guys. Like, sometimes I really feel bad for, for the state Nigeria is in because there's so much potential down here so much human uh, natural resources artificial resources everything you can think of right we just need to properly harness right uh, so that's a, it's a great conversation and I really do enjoy that one uh, and I'm really really optimistic Rachel is always calling me the optimistic guy but yeah I'm very optimistic about Nigeria's future because I know that more great things will happen we have everything it takes right so more great stuff will definitely happen You're listening to Africa.